So we're about a year into the Varroa mite incursion here in Australia, and I figure it's about time I start making some decisions. So I don't know how many people are actually watching this Varroa mite thing unfold. I've been watching it with some interest. I must admit I've buried my head in the sand a little bit and gone, heck, I hope they get it sorted out. But I think it's time for me to make a decision as to what my beekeeping future is going to look like. Because I remember when I was a, I don't know, it was probably my first disease conference that I went to when we were talking about hive beetles and fowl brood and whatever, moths and goodness knows what. And we had a speaker there and he said, Australia doesn't have varroa mite, but it was more about when it gets here, not if it gets here. And now it is here. Down here in South Australia, I'm thinking in my mind that it's more about when it gets here, not if it gets here. Well, that's the game I'm playing with. I'm hoping that it doesn't get here, but I think I should get ready for it to turn up. I'm not 100% sure what my plan is. Other than the fact I think I'm going to reduce the size of my stand so I haven't got so many all in the one spot. Whether that's logistically possible going forward, I don't really know because it's a pain in the ass to go around and pick up three different sites. I've made, I don't know, a site of 20 and I had a truckload of 100 and I've got to go on to five different spots to pick them all up. But then maybe I won't move them as much. I don't know. It depends. It depends on what your beekeeping journey is going to look like, really, ultimately. If you've only got a couple of hives in your backyard, well, you're probably just going to have to do a bit more monitoring and a little bit, be a bit more diligent about finding out when these little brutes turn up. My positive thought is that the rest of the world's got these little buggers, so, and they are still beekeeping. So, surely, surely there's one upside, there's the only upside I can think of at the moment, moment being here in Australia is that we're the last land mass to turn up with these little blighters, so hopefully we can learn something from our, you know, the people that went before us. Because we've got, I think the Americans have been at this for, heck, well, more than 20 years as far as I know. I haven't really looked it up, but they've been at it for a fair while. And there's another, there's other countries that have, well, I don't, I think we are the last major land mass to get Varroa mite as far as I know. Like, I don't know if there's any other ones that haven't got it. Western Australia, you might be in with a chance over there. Maybe, just depends. I don't know. I'm not sure exactly how it all transmits, but from what I can gather, the little blighter gets on a male bee, we're like a drone bee, and can fly into another hive. And apparently, from what I can read, is that when the mites start breeding, they'll breed two mites to every bee. So if you work it out though, so they'll lay two eggs in the larvae, and when your little bee hatches out, it'll be a bit weak because the mites have sucked a bit of its fat off it. And then you get two mites to one bee. So as you're going along, so as the brood's ramping up, there's going to be twice as many mites as there is bees. But the worst part, apparently, is when you get to the other end and then you start declining and the bees are going down and you're still, so the mites are still doubling and your bees are getting less. And so then, obviously, then apparently there's a real big problem. But I don't know what we're going to do in Australia, being that we don't normally have much of a brood break. So apparently the guy go is when there's a brood break, you can actually treat the mites and kill the ones that are out and... But from what I can read, you don't actually get to kill them all, regardless of what you do. They seem to be there, that's it. <laughs> it's a management program, not a eradication program, but hell, I don't know. Anyway, I'm not really sure how it's all gonna look. All I can do is start to make my own plan. I mean, I've been, what would you call that when you're, when you're circling? Is it called circling when you're wondering what to do? I was looking at this thing. I mean, I had plans to be expanding and getting bigger and all the rest of it, you know, to service the pollination industry that's really, whew, I don't know how many thousand hives the almond industry is short, but it was enough to get me enthused. But heck, there might be a few more short now. But anyway, that's not my problem as such. I have got a few almond trees of my own, which makes it interesting. So I'm sort of on both sides of this world. I've got bees, I've got almonds, and I'm, oh man, I don't know. But the upside to it is I'm in South Australia, so I've got probably a year or two before the mites get here, or maybe more, I don't know, let's find out. But I think you've got to have a plan, that's what I reckon. So I wonder what your plan is. What are you thinking? 
What is your plan to deal with this little incursion? So from what I can gather with these little mites, they don't actually kill your bees outright. What they do is they suck the fat off them and make them unhealthy. And then basically all the other diseases ramp up and wipe them out. So hell, I have enough trouble with them rotten moths now, Never mind the moths and the mites. So, but my thought is, being that I'm in this public forum a little bit, I reckon it's about time we all just had a bit of an open discussion about what we're all gonna do. And obviously the bigger players in the field of um, have their own plans and that's fine. And I'm happy to hear from them as well. But I reckon us smaller players, we are allowed to talk amongst ourselves and find out what our beekeeping journey is going to look like. Because I'm so in love with the little blighters, I'm still going to keep bees, even if I have to put up with these rotten little mites. I wonder what it's going to feel like when you do that first sugar shake and you find those 10 mites in your beehive. I really don't know. I remember the first time that I found foul brood and how heartbreaking that was. That was pretty horrendous. So I'm guessing it's going to be that same feeling of somewhere between helplessness and despondency and wondering where to go next. But at least by the time we get to that point, we'll have read some more articles and <laughs> done some more stuff and hopefully had an open discussion between ourselves and with each other and maybe get outside of our own heads and into each other's minds and start discussing how we're going to all go forward together. Obviously, you're going to be on your own journey, but you're not alone because the beekeeping world, we're all friends with each other, aren't we? And we're in this shit show together. 